From the City of Angels, you are listening to the James Salazar Media Podcast. On today's episode, the Halloween extravaganza. We're going to talk about everything. Pop culture, politics, and futurism. So let me strike the music, and I'll meet you on the other side. Hey, guys. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for you. I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. (laughs) (laughs) And welcome to the James Salazar Media Podcast, where you get your dose of pop culture, politics, and futurism. Happy Halloween. Thank you for taking your time on Halloween Day, El Spooky Day, as the Mexicans will call it. They don't call it that, I'm just joking. Um, yeah. And he's clearly against the Second Amendment. He believes that most people shouldn't have any guns at all. Well, at least we can say that he shouldn't have any because... Let me just say something. When anybody, I've shot guns around. My friends have guns. I don't particularly have a gun. I want to buy one. I just never have, you know, I never can justify the cost. Um, And that might be a mistake someday in my life. But at the end of the day, I've I've shot guns. And if they told me it was unloaded and I look at it unloaded, I still... I still either, um, when they're handing it to me, I'll shoot it away towards the floor just in case both of us, both of us are seeing the wrong thing because guns are so dangerous, especially dangerous in the hands of fools. So, because one thing I hate in life is people who are so sure about something and they're not willing to take a second look and this goes for everything but unfortunately as we're hearing the story they gave him the gun you know you have to there's many scenes where you're going to have to shoot at the camera you know because it looks good and you're and um, it's a good shot to have, uh, seeing someone shooting at you. You know, to put it in, you know, in a in a fight scene, in a gunfight scene. And that's what he did, and it went off, and probably, unfortunately, and terrible, probably shot the assistant photographer in the face who was looking into that camera, and it went through her, and hit the uh, director. Which he survived, she didn't. And um, I don't know if it was more than one shot, if he was doing like many and didn't realize uh, there was that many bullets. I, I figure it was one bullet. I mean, it would be total negligence about on everybody there if there was multiple bullets inside the gun. But it looks like... Um, The uh, prop director and uh, Alec Baldwin uh, could face manslaughter charges because of negligence. And here's the thing. He's an outspoken uh, advocate for limiting guns. And that plays a part uh, in his ignorance. Willful ignorance because you know who would, this would have never happened to? Keanu Reeves. He was, he's been trained by Terran Tactical. He knows the dangers and he's super efficient at using guns. And they get uh, 
make him go through these protocols of safety measures before he even shoots a gun, after he shoots a gun, during shooting a gun, because he is someone who decided that if he's going to be doing something, shooting guns, even if they're all blanks, he's going to learn to be great at it. And I'm pretty sure he has, he's not, he's not someone who's against the Second Amendment, but, and I'll just say for anybody who wants to own a gun, who believes in the Second Amendment, buy your gun, don't touch it until, I mean, don't take it out until you go get trained. It is smart, though you don't, um, need to be trained to have that right it would be in your best interest to do that to be fully uh, trained and skilled in this matter and if you're someone who wants to defend a second amendment uh, it will go a long way towards your argument if you're trained and if you're taught in your defense of the Second Amendment. And true people who really believe in the Second Amendment, I mean, they're diehard, they make it a point to be trained and educated about what they're using. So, but with Alec Baldwin, a critic, so number one, the one thing that I wonder, why does anybody who don't believe in a Second Amendment or believe it should be li extremely limited, why, why do they do movies that glorify it? Look it. People know me. I'm against abortion. I would not do a movie where I play anything that glorifies abortion. Because it's against my values and it's something I wouldn't do. Granted, I have not been offered such a role with, with millions of dollars behind it uh, for me to make that decision. But I think, I'm pretty sure that um, I would turn it down. Because it's part of my value system. It's part of my principles. And, and I think that goes a long way to why he was so an ad inept at dealing with a gun he probably did in a lot of probably shot him in a lot of movies but that's the difference between Keanu Reeves and Alec Baldwin and the liberal press is going to blame guns they're not going to blame him or they're going to they're gonna, but in a court of law where all political ideas go out the door and you are responsible for the gun you have in your hand, you are responsible for every bullet, um, I think he's in trouble. So I say this to any liberal, left-leaning actor Get trained. Number one, no, be consistent with your values and, and, and don't do stuff that glorifies things that you hate. Number two, if you're going to do something and you're going to hold something like a sword, gun, like you would studying a lawyer. Get trained. Have respect. Don't let your political views keep you from being respecting the gun. Does that make sense? I think it does. Don't leave it up to... If you want to do violent movies, don't leave it up to... The people on the movie set to train you or do all the hard work for you. 
No, do the hard work. I think Keanu Reeves is the ideal. He will always be trained for the rest of his life. If the whole world went to shit and there's an apocalypse, there's one person who's probably going to survive out of all, all those actors. It's going to be Keanu Reeves because he's, tra he's trained as a cold murderer. In the skills, I mean, not in his heart. He's like the sweetest guy on earth. All right. So that's unfortunate. So sorry for that family who have to deal with such a uh, pointless death. She was right at the beginning of getting good stuff to uh, film, being part of big productions. And she ends up dying because of negligence. And it's clear negligence. What kind of, um, I, mean, I mean, I would have, uh, number one, if he doesn't go to jail, he should pay a lot of money. Number two, he should be forced to be trained. And number three, he should, he should join the NRA. Let me tell you something. You know, everyone wants to blame the NRA, but out of the hundreds of shooters, mass shootings we've had in this country, only Two were NRA members, but there's been more Democrats who've been a part of mass shootings than NRA members. So, what are you going to do with that? And I'm pretty sure there's Republicans too, but they're not hypocritical on this matter. But at the end of the day, if you're part of the NRA, I would bet that the majority of the members, not probably all, but the majority of the members have a gun, know how to handle a gun, and we're trained at, in how to handle a gun and respect a gun. Because it sort of goes hand in hand with being a part of the NRA. People who are foolish with guns, I would like to bet that they are not members. So let's get off this subject and let's get on to what's really happening in our society today. Look it, I've been vaccinated. I believe in the vaccine. I have taken it and, um, and those who don't, I think are foolish. But do I think that there should be a mandate uh, that people should take it? Absolutely not. It's fundamentally against the principles of our country. To force people to put something in their body and say they can't buy goods or services unless they have it, it is the clear definition of fascism. And it's remarkable to me how many people complained about Donald Trump being fascist when you couldn't bring up any uh, example where he passed any law. Now, granted, he talked about fascist things, but never did it. And that was one of the major criticisms about Donald Trump for the same people to come back and actually implement fascist laws. Clearly fascist laws. And people are not doing it. We have all uh, firemen, policemen, uh, paramedics, doctors, nurses, pilots who are refusing to obey this fascist, clearly fascist order, un-American order. And this is a problem of leadership. Joe Biden, cognitive decline, he probably doesn't have the tools anymore to inspire people to uh, take the vaccination to be a part of our society. Once, once, you told people that they better get it instead of they should get it, you have more than half our population 
refusing to get it just on principle. And there are going to be mass walkouts of police, of firemen. We're already seeing with pilots. We're already seeing it with distribution. Dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. It is... <laughs> it is one of the most foolish things. This, this president is terrible. Absolutely terrible. And he's doubling down on terrible. He's doubling down by, by th- on fascism. And as uh, food dries up because no one's taking, no one's driving it, no one's taking it out of the ports because people are getting let go because they're not taking the, the vaccine. When there's no people, less police on the streets, you'll see anarchy. When there's less firemen putting out fires, houses get burned down. When there's no one to take you into the paramedics, uh, ambulance to take you to the hospital and if you do get that there's very little doctors that are there having to deal with multiple people you are creating a clusterfuck of all proportions and you're doing something that's unconstitutional there could not be a stupider man in office We should never listen to anybody who says, doesn't matter if he has a good economy, doesn't matter if he's good policies overseas, he offends me, he needs to go. Those people should never be listened to again. They are idiots. And we are all paying the price for it. If you don't have buyer's remorse With Joe Biden, you are an intellectual moron. Granted, you might have been tired. You might have thought Joe Biden was going to be good. So I'll give you that. But if you don't have buyer's remorse now, if you don't wish Donald Trump was at the helm right now, you're pretty much an idiot. Not saying Donald Trump's the great. I can't stand him. I can't the way he stand the way he looks, how he talks. He's so thin skinned. But God, if you, if this was the alternative, what a mistake the American people made. Even in the light of what happened at the Capitol, Joe Biden should be impeached. But I just don't trust any Democrat. I think there's not only a problem of cognitive decline, but philosophy and ideology. It just doesn't work in the American way. We have high inflation. Businesses that are trying to hold on because of the pandemic, and he wants to raise the taxes on people. But guess what? Businesses don't pay tax. They pass that tax in the service or the products they have, or they have fire people or they lay people off and have people do more work, or they do the numbers and they say, um, it's not worth it to keep this business in this economy where they're going to socially engineer everybody off my profit. So they don't engage in the new economy and wait for another president to come, which will happen. Every time a business decided to wait for a more friendly president towards business, they were always rewarded. And every time a president was not friendly to business that wanted to take their profits through taxes at an extraordinary rate, people just said, eh, I'll just chill on what I have. It's called post-tax money. Money that's already taxed that I have saved. It's the difference between rich people and poor people, rich people in the middle class. Rich people save money. They have a rainy day fund for such a thing as this. 
So there has to be an equilibrium where it is worth the risk of money and and hard work to open a business for a reward where their wealth can grow. If that cannot happen, they're not going to invest in the new economy. They can do other things to make money instead of opening business. And that will leave our society without jobs. You would be a fool to open a job, I mean, create a job in this environment. You're going to have to have a super product like um, completely curing baldness. That guy can make uh, a killing in any economy. But a $10 Big Mac? My friends, looks like robots are coming in to take your order. You will see the people rise up because of this vaccine mandate. Let alone the mass mandate, but the vaccine mandate, making people put something inside them and carry a piece of paper that shows that they have taken it so they can buy goods and services. My friend, that is Nazi Germany. That is fascism. That is forms of communism. And we don't do that in America because it is wrong. And if you think it's right, my friends, never say anything about fascism again because you believe in it. And, and let me tell you something. A lot of people believe in fascism. You know, the... the, the the argument is still out whether it's better for people to uh, govern themselves or people need to be governed by the government. And often for the government to take control of the society, it's got to implement fascist uh, laws. Communists believe in fascists. Socialism believe in fascism. They have to because there has to be control by the government to implement those things. So... Just be clear that there you believe there is times where fascism needs to happen. Just be honest. Because, my friends, from there on, you have to make the argument. Yes, sometimes we need to control people and make people do things for the greater good of, of society, for the greater good of of the citizenry. And then you can make your argument and see if you win seats. Because that's the thing. That will always be something wrong about Democrats and the left-leaning people that have to omit the truth to get something done. Uh, the general notion is that conservatives get mad at lies and uh, liberals get mad at truth. I am against the vaccine mandate. It is fascist. I believe in freedom. And the stupid people who don't want to get a vaccine because they're believing outrageous stuff, that's on them. That's their choice. And sometimes we make bad choices that end up coming back to hurt us. You're never going to eradicate COVID-19 100%. We're at 1%, and people are acting like it's at 50%. If the quota... The benchmark that we're looking for is 100% eradication of COVID. My friends, we will never get there. We got to mitigate it to the best as possible. I mean, we still got typhoid. Okay, that's it. Now, let me say this to you. I watched a couple of movies right now. Movies. I saw Dune. I saw Halloween Kills. I saw um, No Time to Die. And there's one other movie. And Venom. It's 
So here's my reviews. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Now, Venom. You know, I like Tom Hardy. He's a great actor. Um, the whole story seemed rushed. And part of it is that they're, tra- they're going to hand it off to uh, Sony owns a certain half of Marvel um, product. And then you got the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe with Iron Man and all that. And um, they o- Sony owned uh, Venom. And they are, after this movie, they are planning to hand it off to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and have him uh, be in the same universe as uh, Iron Man. Well, no, he's dead. And uh, Thor, all that. So the story was very rushed. It all happens in like two days at the most. Uh, the story of Carnage is really quick. All the acting's good and it's very funny. But these are epic stories about Venom and Carnage and how that happens. And um, how terrible Carnage is and, and how destructive Venom is. And you see parts of that. But it just, man, it, it, the story just felt like it happened really quick. And it wasn't able to be built on. It should be a way more epic story. And I'm sorry that, um, that Sony just decided to put it out. I wish at the end of the day they would have gave it to um, the Marvel Center of Bannock Universe and let them handle it. Because they would have wrote a way longer story. Uh, they would have wrote a way more devastating carnage, and what he was doing. He should be he should be about doing epic stuff uh, that makes uh, Venom fight him, fight his evil. And at the end of the day, it was a uh, a buddy comedy between um, Venom, the uh, alien symbiote. And um, Brock, played by um, Tom Hardy. So it was fun to watch, but I think it was a great, it was a missed opportunity to do something really good with these characters that people, they're pretty beloved. And hopefully we see the Marvel Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, We see um, Spider-Man dealing with Venom also. Maybe somehow we can bring Carnage into the story somehow and have some epic um, storytelling that Marvel has. So at the end, it was very fun to watch, but a missed opportunity. So I'm going to give it out of five potatoes. I'm going to give it two and a half potatoes because it was entertaining. But at the end of the day, it all happened too fast, and they round up the story too quickly, and you never saw. Woody Harrison was awesome as, as um, Carnage, but you never really saw the Carnage Carnage can do. So then I watch James Bond. This is a spoiler, spoiler, or spoiler. This was a very good movie. It capped out the story with uh, Daniel Craig as James Bond. It did the first thing, and here's a spoiler. If you have not watched it, go forward. Um, This is the very first James Bond where James Bond actually dies at the end. And it rounds out the story between the first one, Casino Royale, and, um, and brings it all into conclusion. And it, it closes some storylines that James Bond, the character, has been dealing with. It's action-packed. Got a cool car in it. Um, we see uh, Rami Malek is great in it. He looks creepy. And um, like always... James Bond saves the day, but at this point, 
The only way he can save the day is through sacrifice. The only day he can save the day is through sacrificing his life. And uh, for the world. So I won't spoil it too much for you. I told you what happens, but um, how that story is told is very good. The action scenes are awesome. The very first action scene is always awesome. Um, we see uh, some of the same characters come back. And um, we see the passing of the guard. All these great things. And um, overall, I thought Daniel Craig was a uh, great James Bond. Excited to see what he does after this. So out of five potatoes, I'll give it a four potatoes for James Bond, No Time to Die. It's definitely a good watch. And if you want, if it want. If you want it to make sense, watch all the movies. Quantum of Solace sucks. It's the, it's the one that um, has some left-leaning director. Just, it, it, it was a disaster. You know. Now. Dune. Now, I watched Dune, the 80s version, which is great. It, tells, it tries to fit off all the books in one story, or at least the most of them, the main crust of the story. And then they, uh, Sci-Fi came out with a miniseries, which was also great. It, tell, it told a much uh, deeper account of the story. Um, it was really good. It's the first thing I saw James McAvoy in, and um, Paul Atreides, uh, the actor who played him, was great. I think William Hurt plays his father. But this new one, spoiler alert, it's going to tell the story slow. It's going to tell the story deep. And it is cinematically looks amazing. All the actors are amazing. Uh, well acted. Looks good. And it, it is action packed. It, well, it's sort of action-packed, it. but for those who know, who've seen the first one in the 80s and who've seen the uh, miniseries, um, the ending is cool, but it's not very high. It doesn't hit at a high point because we're in the middle. We're like at the beginning, like, if the story is 100%, we're about 25% into it. And some people didn't like that because, you know, they want some kind of... Uh, oh, my, my TV went on. What the hell, man? What the hell, man? Shut that TV off. Some ghost in here on Halloween turning on my TV. Hey, what the hell? What's going on, man? What's going on? What the hell are these? You shut up, people. Oh my God. Get out of here. I'm recording my podcast. Everything's going haywire. Oh, you should know. I'm yelling. Do you think I'm yelling at the wall? You probably think I'm crazy. What? All right. Where were, where were they at? Yeah, so it, it, it looks good. It looks amazing. Um, it doesn't have a high point because some, you know, people are, were very critical of it because uh, they think it should have happened in like a Endgame or, or Infinity War. Uh, it's just not what it, how it goes. But the next movie, uh, the stakes get higher. And it has been green greenlitted because everybody watched it, but it is an amazing movie to watch. If you, and I'm pretty sure you'll be okay with it if you haven't watched the others, or you haven't read the book, or have read the book. But I give it four potatoes because um, I felt they could have ended at a better place, but they ended it good nonetheless. 
And last but not least, for Halloween, I was going to say Jason Kills. Halloween Kills. Now, a lot of people are critical of this, but I actually really liked it. It went a little bit of a backstory. It went back in the future and back into the past. And it tried to explain the motivations of certain characters and how they were dealing with little side stories, which I thought were cool. And all this is happening in the, in the world where Jason's actually killing people in regular time, going back and who he killed in the past and how certain people survived and are they going to survive this time around? Um, people, um, how people get stirred up into mass hysteria. It's really good. I like it. Some people just want Jason just to go through and kill people and kill people and kill people and kill people until somebody kills him. But at the very end, they sort of answer the question. Why does Michael always get back up? I'm not going to spoil that for you. Watch the movie. But they they landed on a definitive answer. It was always aloof, that answer. And at the very end, they answer it. So I enjoyed it. But I can't give it like a four potato. I'll give it like a three potato because I just don't give horror movies. Uh four or five potatoes like the exorcist will get a, like a five potato because that seems scary and the acting's amazing the story's amazing what other movie now that i'm thinking about what other movie would i give a five potato jaws that borderlines is horror um the um, first alien gets a four potato for sure maybe four and a half um Amityville Horror, the very first one, could get a four potato. Um, the Ring, that was excellent. That could be a four or five potato. Hey, if you want to, li- uh, what you think could be a five potato or four potato or four and a half potato, put it in, a, in an email and I'll read it at jamesalazarmedia at gmail.com. Go, go ahead and do that. And so I give it a three and a half potato. It was better than I thought it was going to be. And um, there's supposed to be another one after this that's sort of obvious um, what happens in this one. <laughs> right? So um, we're still dealing with the same night where J- uh, Michael Myers comes back. Um, as you know, at the, at the uh, be- end of the other one they trapped him in the basement and set the basement on fire and spoiler alert spoiler alert spoiler alert ah the firemen screw that up obviously can't let the house burn so there movie reviews done now let's get into some few. I got a couple of futurist, futurism things that I need to address. Okay, so I'm going to choose one from every subject matter. So we're going to do advanced transportation. So Uber announced it will roll out 50,000 Teslas to its drivers. And they're going to order them from Hertz. So Hertz put an order of 100,000. So basically, uh, Uber wants uh, its drivers to drive cars that don't impact the environment. So they're going to get Tesla. So this is a big boost to Tesla. Uh, big order. And um, as a Uber driver, you can rent a car weekly. And, you know, I did the numbers. You're going to have to... Um, basically drive a 50 hour a week to make a decent profit if you're renting an uber i think it's on the order of like a, maybe a hundred dollars a day 
Um, don't quote me on that. I'll get the right answer for that. But um, it's going to give people options. Um, as you know, I am an Uber driver. I only drive on weekends. It might be something for me because it's $300 a weekend. And I'm not wasting gas. And there's no wear and tear on my car. It might be an option. Okay, let's go back. Let's go to the next one. Artificial intelligence. Let's see what I want to read to you. Um, scientists. I'm going to read you these. Um, experts warn that human beings are going to start getting hacked. We've got to read that. World-renowned social philosopher and best-selling author of Sipens has stark warning has a stark warning we need to start regulating ai because otherwise big companies are going to be able to hack humans this is yuval believes that the rapidly increasing sophistication of ai could lead to a population of hacked humans according to a report by cbs 60 minutes to deal with this issue he calls on the world leaders to begin to regulate ai and data collection efforts by large corporations to hack a human being is to get to know the person better than they know themselves he told the show and based on that to increasingly manipulate you. Okay, so he's not... He's saying... Uh, hack are... Basically what... You know, marketers do. But AIs were going to do it in a way... That will be... Probably 10 times more susceptible. Um, because... And this, this is what you call artificial intelligence... Um, being used by uh, business. Um, you're going to have businesses. Like right now, there's a uh, group of people who came out with an AI to write copy, uh, to write uh, sales ads, and it writes it for you because it knows what's selling. It takes all the information of what uh, what's selling and what kind of verbiage uh, is getting people to buy, and it'll write it for you. You don't need to hire a, a copywriter. You do if you want high end, but for general, uh, you can get an AI to write your copy, put it on your sales page, and it should uh, put some triggers in people's mind to, to want to buy it. And um, this will get increasingly more accurate and um, more persuasive that this guy thinks it's, it's literally just hacking the mind of humans. So, yeah, there's that. Um McDonald partners with IBM to replace drive through employees with AI. So they're going to – that's coming, people. And the accuracy, accuracy rate of the drive through is not that high. So I'm pretty sure they're going to make it easy. Places like McDonald's, that's going to work, right? Um, you can't have too much adjustments to the meal. Um, you just pick a number. I mean, I just say I want a number one. That's a Big Mac combo. Large fry, large Coke, medium fry, medium Coke, or switch it all up. I'm pretty sure an AI can go, uh, I can pretty get that uh, voice recognition software and pretty much, I mean, they're really having us use an app, order it through an app to push the buttons, and you'll get a discount on the McDonald's app. So they're priming us to have a person, a robot, I am a robot. <laughs> Please place your order. So that's happening. And, you know, like I said, they will get rid of people. Let me tell you something. AI and um, robots doing um, simple tasks. It's going to put a lot of people out of the jobs in the next five to ten years. And we're going to have basically a an appointment, employment crisis. And the only alternative, if the space race is still moving forward at the rate it is right now, 
all the employment opportunities will be connected to the space race. So you can go to school now and be ahead of the curve because that's where it's going, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it or not. I mean, if you look at all the jobs right now, they're all technical. They're all code, robotics, um, support industries for the space race. Those are paying the highest now. And if you want to serve, you want to be the cutting edge of the military is going to be the Space Force because there's going to be a lot of people who are going to try to do some dirty shit in space. And it's going to be the military's job to keep it from happening. You're going to be the space police because just the way people work, they're going to be sooner or later space pirates. People who can get their own ships, who will take the minerals, the valuable minerals taken from um, meteors in our Kuiper Belt, and there's going to be there's going to be some rare minerals that are billions of dollars, and space pirates are going to go and try to take over that ship and steal those m minerals. And it's going to be the space force or a unifying force from all countries who's going to have to stop them, let alone countries like Russia and China who might be doing it themselves. That is a cutting edge of war. That is a cutting edge of technology uh, in the future. And this is the last one's pretty funny. Scientists build an AI to give ethical advice and it turns out is super racist <laughs> uh, I think most likely they had the uh, AI try to treat everybody equally and as you know certain people without historical perspective are not acting as good as others so it tends to be harder on those people without the historical perspective. And some people just think that's racist. People think judging all races the, the same is racist. People who were slaves or minorities should be judged differently because they're a minority. That's a big argument. That's a whole other argument. That's a political argument. And if an AI is just giving, hey, give ethical advice, but just be equal, then it might come out more judgmental towards other minorities, which it perceive as racist. So, this is the problem with AI. It's going to think how you tell it to think. And with our political environment now, right now we have, we're having a lot of uh, just racism towards white people. In the sense that you're saying that white people are racist based upon their skin color. It's just as foolish as saying that People who have dark skin are more prone to crime. That would also be racist. Anything based on skin color that determines the behavior of people is racist. So we got to be careful that the social justice warriors don't try to influence AI to become racist towards anybody. But and if it can't not take in our political uh, situation and ramifications, maybe we should not let AI just venture into this avenue and let it be something that the humans argue over. Because it sounds like it's not working. Elon Musk wants to start a university... And it's called the Texas Institute of Technology and Science. And the abbreviation of that is called TITS, 
tits. <laughs> no one says Elon Musk was not funny. So that, so when you go to uh, that school, you can say, I go to tits. That's funny. Just as funny on its face. And let's see what we else have here. Have here. What's up we have here? Get out of here. Um, hard science. Scientists claim they discovered the first planet in galaxy beyond the Milky Way. Astronomers may have spotted thousands of exoplanets in different star systems, but they had yet to find evidence of exoplanets in other galaxies beyond our Milky Way. Now, using data collected by the NASA Chandra X-ray Telescope, an international team of scientists may have found evidence for an existence of a Saturn-sized planet in the Messenger 51 galaxy, some 28 billion light years away. Impressive achievement and underscores the mind-boggling vastness of the universe. So that's awesome. We can, our, our X-ray technology can see if there's uh, another planet it's not habitable probably it's not habitable but um but they exist we couldn't prove that uh, planets existed in other galaxies because they were too far away even though it's obviously it probably every galaxy has planets and solar systems but we never had actual proof of it but i guess we do now so that's a good discovery hey and um, let me see, let me, let's, let's do one more here before we end today. Off-world. NASA employees say SpaceX Starship is about to change everything. NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab System architect Casey Handmer, Handmer is impressed with SpaceX progress towards developing a rocket capable of sending astronauts to the moon and even to Mars. Two years ago, the Starship was a design concept and a mock-up, Hammer wrote in a lengthy post on his personal blog about the super ambitious rocket. Today, it is 95% complete prototype that will soon fly into space and may even make it Back in one piece, well, we hope. SpaceX has indeed made significant strides and launching early prototypes, early prototypes to a to elude or just over six miles to build a giant Mechazilla robot tower capable of snatching starships upon their return. Sounds weird. Um, it's that's that they have these prongs that catch. Uh, I don't know how that's going to work. i got to see it work. The spacecraft's first orbital test occurs as soon as next month. If regulatory approval ends up, if it doesn't end up dragging it on. So next month, November, we're going to, they're going to rock this, they're going to rock this rocket right out of our orbit. And if it comes back down safely, my friends, that's it. It's on. It's on like Donkey Kong. On our way to the moon and on our way to the Mars. It's been a great year for the space industry. A lot of testing. And granted to uh, all the three major industries, we have SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Virgin Galactic. They all had successful launches. And now um, SpaceX is going to launch the vehicle to get us back to the moon, get us back, get us to Mars. And we got a couple other countries, other nations that are doing the same. And as long as everything goes too, this next year for space exploration, it's going to be massive. We will start planning the whole trip to Mars and the moon. And probably by the end of next year, we might have feet on the moon since the last time we were there. So I'm going to end it there, my friends. End it there with optimism towards our future. We talked about a lot today. We have 
Where are we at? We are at 54 minutes. I want to wish you a happy Halloween. Be safe out there. Watch your kids. And um, be ready for more of the James Salazar Media. I will be coming out with a book and a teaching course that I'm very excited about that I worked on during the pandemic. I created a whole university and ready to blast off with that. So be ready for that. Uh, you can follow me. First of all, if anything, you, you have an opinion about anything I said today, good, bad, or indifferent, please put it in an email. I'll read it on the podcast. Also, my friends, what was I going to say? Also, my friends. Also, my friends, uh, you can follow me on any of my, on the social media platforms. I'm pretty much on all of them. Just type in James Salazar Media. I should come up. Please follow. Please follow the podcast. Please subscribe. Please leave a review, a positive one. If you can, just leave it in a review at this point. And my friends, when the storm of life come against you and you find yourself on your knees, stand tall. Take a look at that storm and say what my sensei Jack Burton always says. Give me your best shot. Strike the music. Engage. Come on. Shit. Strike the music. Happy Halloween, everybody.